Madam Speaker, I have mostly appreciated the kind words directed at me. I say mostly because it has been my experience here that there is often an inverse ratio between the nice things people say about you and their inclination to vote for your bill. Uh, I hope we can overcome that in this situation. But I want to talk now, and we've worked on this in a compromised way, and I'm proud to have worked with the WHIP and my ranking member uh, counterpart and others across the ideological spectrum. And meeting a national crisis does not give any of us the luxury of doing everything we want. I hope we'll come back here with more votes. And if we have more votes, the next time we negotiate, I'll be tougher. But you have got to accept reality. I wish this was a bill that reflected more of my priorities. I wish I could eat more and not gain weight. But I have learned that acting imprudently on my wishes that cannot be realized is not helpful. But I do want to address those who share with me a commitment to dealing with people who are low on the economic spectrum. Madam Speaker, I do my work, and I work on a lot of the general issues, but if there weren't poor people in this world, and if we didn't have discrimination, I wouldn't be here. That's why I'm here. What I have tried to do every time we've had a major bill, I'll be honest, is to use the leverage I get as chairman because there are things that everybody needs to put in something for the poor people, to put in something for the people who don't otherwise get a fair shake. And sometimes they, there's a lot of other things in there. But I will tell my colleagues this, particularly my fellow liberals, if we aren't prepared to accept some of the things we don't like, we will not have the power to deliver for the people we care about. We do not unilaterally have the power to impose policies we would like. And therefore, a compromise is required. What do we got in this bill? I've got a lot of I'm putting in the record from every good government group, not good government, every liberal advocacy group, not ACORN, I want to assure my colleagues over there before they have a conniption, but every other group, the Low Income Housing Coalition, the Legal Aid Society, the National Coalition for the Homeless, and it says we are writing the thank you for the inclusion of measures to protect renters. People all over this country who rented, who didn't make an imprudent to stay house, found themselves being evicted because somebody didn't pay the mortgage. We try to protect them against this. We try to keep subsidies. I tell you this, the lower income people, the poor people, they will get nothing if we're not prepared to compromise some. Secondly, we have been here, and I understood what the gentleman Ohio, Mr. Kucinich, was saying, very good language on foreclosure. Is it everything I wanted? No, but I'll tell you this, if this bill passes, we will have a federal government empowered to do for the first time significant reductions in foreclosures. Now, I don't know who's going to win in November, but I will tell you this, this will put in the hands of whoever the president is the power to do a great deal of good. Please don't throw it out because you're unhappy with some other provisions. Gentlemen, yields back his time.